Welcome to Mariposa Woolen Mill Needle Felting Kit Instruction. Felting is causing the fibers to intermingle and mat together, and there's a couple ways that you can do that. Wet felting is one way, which is hot water, a bit of soap, and a lot of friction. And the other way is needle felting, which I'm going to demonstrate to you short. The needles that you use for felting have ridges that encourage the fibers to grab onto the other fibers and the more that you poke it the more that it felts. It's always best to use a surface like a foam or a rice pad to protect the needle because it's fragile and it's also very sharp. Everything you need is included in the kit so let's get started. Our Bluebird felting kit begins like this. Start with the light blue I'll just kind of block in very softly in the back. It's okay if the dark blue shows through. We're just giving a little bit of a variation of, of color. A little bit of white. And as we progress down the background, we'll just add a bit of the, the evergreen color.
Okay, so now at this point, what we do is just anchor down our background and just going very gently, try not to stay in, in a one position or trying to go in at a line. You want to kind of spread out those fibers. Don't need to go very deep right now. Just trying to um, spread them out and get them anchored down a little bit into the blue mat. So do that all over the mat to secure the fibers that you've placed. So the next element we'll work on is creating our tree stump. So divide the roving. You don't have to use the whole thing or you, you can. I mean, if it's, uh, if you wanna make it that large, it's fine. So in our composition here, We have a bit of an angle and we'll work on making the top, the, the cut part of the stump, the correct shape. So right now we're just going to anchor this down and establish placement for our stump. So as you can see, you can see the other fibers from underneath, the green. We're gonna be layering this particular element uh, with the light brown and a bit of the olive green and giving some depth to it um, with some black. 
giving our foundation block of color and we'll work on that, adding to it. And I'm not worried about these extra fibers that are hanging off the bottom. If I can't use them within my design, then toward the end of my project, I'll just give it a little trim and cut that off. Because if I try to pull it off now, I might be pulling some of these other fibers off because they're not completely secure. So with the darker brown, then we'll add a lighter brown, just small bits, so we can uh, build up a texture. And work uh, vertically, just like the grain of the, the tree trunk. And when you add new fiber, you can work the surrounding area so that everything is more uniform or they have a similar height. So you don't want to create pockets where you're concentrating without thinking about the whole element there. And we may come back to adding more of that light brown. We're just going to build up texture.
just going to add a little bit of mossy green. So now we will be layering a couple of colors. I'm going to give our top that dark brown again, and then we're going to layer on top. So you're basically going to be creating a line across and giving just a little bit of a, a roundness. Create the illusion that you can see the top and then we will add that lighter color that lighter brown around the edges first though we can just take a small bit and just roll it in our hand so it makes it more manageable when we start a line Okay, so now, now the trunk is ready for our bird to sit on. So blocking in our bluebird begins with the darker blue. Just want to use a small bit and we're going to block out the shape starting with the head. We can just make the roving just a smaller bit um, make it more manageable so we're just going to block it out basically giving an outline and then we'll fill in when we get there.
that's our body excluding the tail, which will come off this way. And we can, if we don't feel like it's wide enough, we can always, when we build the wings on, change the outline of that area. So if you're happy with the shape of your bird's outline, then we can start applying the color. Using the brighter blue, just start with the head, block it in. And I'm going to color, cover up the, the darker blue just because I don't need it necessarily right there. I guess we could have outlined it with this bright blue but it's just a bit harder to see in contrast to that light blue. So yes, you could have outlined it with the other color. I will use that darker color over here. So I'm going to leave that and I'll be outlining it with the white a little bit later. White or the blue, depending on which is, which is touching the bird at the moment. So we want that highlight to stand out. Okay. So let's just pull that excess off, start building the wing here with the darker blue. And use the dark blue to continue the extended part of the, the wing and into the tail. color for its bright chest color. So the amber also goes up under the, the beak just slightly.
this point I've added a bit too much in the length of the amber there but we will be putting the white and I'll just put it over top of it It's okay that those colors blend together. It's a nice little touch there. Nice, nice little touch of, of realism. See where I have my bird building, I don't really need this blue anymore. So I'm going to try and take off that small piece there. So I still want to use that dark blue on the outside where the wing is, on the outside. So we'll just add a little fullness there. So if you're not quite happy with the shape of things on the outside, you can, what I'm doing right now is just pushing the fibers in because it's still very soft on the outside. So I'm just refining that edge until I'm happy with the shape of it. If you want to use a just a picture and not necessarily the picture that we've provided of a bluebird that's to give yourself a uh, an additional reference that's great So with the light blue now, we're just going to give some accents to the facial area and, and then we'll use the other bright blue to add to the wings, I think, because all the color that we have up here is the bright blue. So the variation that we want is that lighter color. Before we put the beak in and start using the black, let's go ahead and just add that bright blue color to the wings. We don't want to eliminate the dark color 
just want to add a variation. Because we'll be adding the, the lighter color too. Let it trail down the tail, adding some interest there. I think that's enough bright blue. Just add a little bit at the top of the wing, at the shoulder there, just small pieces. And if you notice that what I'm doing with the needle, every once in a while I'm pulling, stretching the fibers out. Basically like just combing it, just pushing it where I want it to go. Okay. So now we're ready for adding the black detail. Start very small, small bits. I'm gonna add that beak in. It's right there where the body and the head meet. I have a quite small beak. So if you have, if you add too much fiber and it looks strange to you, like that's a little bit too much for me, I'm gonna pull some of that out. Just being careful not to pull away what I've already established. And I'm just going to get a fresh piece of, of black, very small. Too small, need to add just a smidge more. Okay, so and now we're ready for the eye. Be sure you're happy with where you want your eye. I mean, you can pull it up just like we did the beak, but it is a more delicate um, element. See, the shape of the head is not exactly how I want it. So I'm just gonna use some of the background because it's still soft and just work horizontally because I, I want this to be a horizontal appearance too. So, okay, so I've added my black, just a little touch of white around the eye. Probably can't even tell what I'm holding. That's how little that you should get. Just kind of roll it a little bit in your between your fingers and gently place it around the eye. Not completely around.
So if you notice that the blue of the bird's head doesn't quite stand out as much as I want it to. So what I'm going to do is just add a bit of white horizontally and add it behind the head so that it gives a contrast to the element I just worked so hard on to stand out. I'm going to do that until it stands out nicely. You may have to add more white to you, the rest of your picture as part of your sky. The appearance of clouds. Just be mindful of your the shape of your bird, that you're not putting the white over on top of it. Just move it up gently. And just try and stay horizontal. And I forgot to mention that if you do find some vegetation within your fibers, it's pretty easy to remove. So the bird body and face are done. Let's just add some feet and then we'll work on the flowers. So just grabbing a small bit of fiber, rolling it in your fingers. The placement of the first leg. They are small birds, so they do not have big legs. So start small and build on that. I, I am going to just work on getting the length of the leg, the placement of both of them before I put the feet on. So you can probably use like just the remainder of the little piece that you pulled off to make the leg, but probably enough just to make the, the feet, or at least start them. Okay, so to create our flowers and stems, we'll be using both of the greens, the pink, the future color, um, the amber, and the black. 
also set those other colors aside. So using both variations of the green, I'm just gonna pull off a small piece, roll it on our fingers, because we want to have a stem. So however tall you want these to be, because you don't have anything else here. So if you want to add some tall foliage, then that'd be nice to add to your composition. So just anchoring it down and just giving it a pull and poke as you go down. Just gonna give a variations of lengths, placements, some overlapping, just like flowers would be. Just being spontaneous about it. You don't want it to look too uniform because nature is not that way. So continue that just creating and the leaves would be the same way you would just start from one position and end at the stem using small bits so just create those and we'll work on the next thing the next element Let's just work on our flowers. So using the fuchsia color, always divide it so you have something more manageable. We're going to create each petal at a time. So we want to start with a big flower and if you don't necessarily have a stem that's connected to it, that's fine. We can always add it. So Let's work on 
they will create six flowers, larger ones up front, smaller ones toward the back. So I'm just going to give a little anchor there. I'm going to create my first petal. So they're wider, wider at the tip and more narrow toward the center of the flower. Okay, so building each flower petals first, then we create the center, small tuft, that may be too large. I usually fold it a little bit so that I know that my edge is clean next to the flower. And then I'm going to push it down because I want it to have a, like, a round top. So there's our flower. Just adding a little bit of depth around the base. We just put a little bit of black. Not necessarily all over, just where the center touches the petals. And you can make it go up just a little bit. So there's a little graduation of color, maybe a shadow, just giving it a little bit of dimension. Okay, so each flower is created that way and just vary your sizes. The closer ones are larger, the further away they are, the smaller. These, this is smaller than the larger ones, so just uh, perspective that way. So I'll come back to finish the project with you.
So we can finish off our painting by just giving everything a once over or a lot more than once, just to kind of push everything down, make everything nice and felted so it will stay. So this will take several minutes to go over all of that fresh fiber that you've added, all the colors you want them to stay, then just go over them several times just to make sure that they are secure to the mat. And the more shallow that you poke, the less likely that you will see those indentions where you're poking. Just more frequent poking and, uh, and that will help to eliminate those bigger holes. That's our finished project. And like I said earlier, if you wanted to cut off any of those loose fibers around the edges, just use your scissors and uh, just clean it up. This is our Bluebird felting kit. Thanks for joining me.